Hello everybody and welcome back to EU4 and today we're going to be continuing our series where we attempt to spawn global trade in every single trade node in EU4. Last time we played this series we played as Aragon uh, where we only owned the Valencia trade node along with some key trade ports along the Mediterranean in order to make Valencia spawn global trade by 1600. However going forward in this series that type of rule set does not work as well for the majority of these trade nodes so i'm just going to simply change the rule set to just being spawn global trade and today we're going to be playing as ormuz to spawn global trade within the ormuz trade node now before i start this video i do want to encourage you guys to go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already so you don't miss out on any of my other great eu4 content such as mission tree only underrated nations this series and just general achievement runs. Speaking of achievement runs, once I hit 5,000 subscribers, I will be doing a true air of Timur achievement run. Also, if you'd like to support my channel even more, uh, then I also have memberships available for everybody, uh, ranging from a dollar to two dollars, that you can help out my channel grow a little bit faster. Now, without further ado, let's get into it as Ormuz. Here we are as Ormuz. We do have 7k troops along with. 14k ships well not 14k 14 ships and looking at our trade map mode we need to divert a lot of trade from Gudra and the Gulf of Aden over to Ormuz those are our two inlets and a majority of our trade is going to be coming from India and the Coromandel, Dakan, Doab, Gudra and Lahore areas and for Gulf of Aden uh, it's just going to be coming from Ethiopia and Coromandel. Let's go ahead, rival Hassa. Uh, let's also rival Oman, and we will also rival Mahra. State-wise, we're just gonna do my typical, usual estate stuff. All right, ally-wise, I can ally Ajam. I could probably get the Mam, no, not get the Mamlux. Not gonna get the Timurids, so we'll just go with Ajam for right now. All right, and we're gonna do some merchant maneuvering here. Um, we currently have one in Orma, in Hormuz, uh, one in Gulf of Aden, and one in Gujarat. So let's also send one down here to Coromandel. Push some of that trade back up towards Gujarat. All right, and we did get a claim on Oman. So that's going to be our very first war, is just simply attacking Oman. Uh, once my diplomat's back, stack wipe these fools. Not a stack wipe, surprisingly, but it will be right now. A lot of what we're going to be doing early on are is pretty much consolidating and early wars. We're going to be attacking Baluchistan, Dawasir, Yas, Hasa, uh, maybe even Mushasha if uh, Korakunlu kind of gets beat up good enough. And Shah Rukh is dead, meaning uh, Timurid boys, yeah, they're uh, they're they're all pretty ticked off at the Timurids right now. We do also have a core on the Timurids, so kind of hoping their their subjects break out of them soon enough. Okay, and let's full annex Oman. Next big war, well, not really big war, but we're going to be attacking Yas now. Okay, and we have full occupied Dawasir, who we are going to be making into a vassal. Just to have some additional troops, they could bring about anywhere between 3 to 5k troops. As for Yas, we are just going to go ahead full annex these guys. However, what I am interested in doing is attacking the nation of Hasa. We actually have a couple cores on these guys, so let's go ahead and do this. And we may even annex Najd. And look at that. Mamluks are expanding quite a bit all the way over here already. All right, Najd. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to full annex them by giving them to Dawasir. We can also secure a royal marriage with the Mamluks. Got to get that Mammer Jammer alliance going early and often, especially if the Ottomans are going to be expanding this way. Get rid of Najd. So now Dawasir is looking pretty nice. And for Hassa, of course, we're just going to full annex these guys. No point in keeping them around. Not too shabby so far. Not too shabby. All right, in terms of rivals, we're gonna have, there's no possible rivals, I love it. Oh, except for Mushasha. Let's also secure an alliance with the Mamluks. And let's send out our light ships as of right now, just to protect trade in Gujarat, just to push some more money out this way. We are pushing about 130 this way, so our trade node's at 4.7. Should push us to 5. Yep, we're at 5.3 after pushing us to 201. Oh. Uh, what if I don't join this war? I'm not joining this. Why? Because I want Mushasha for myself, Ajam. 
Oh, Mamluks are also at war with a job. So good thing I did not join this. Okay, and we are going to start another war, this time against Baluchistan. For our tier 2 government reform, we're going to go with enforced trader privileges for more trade efficiency and trade range. Also going to get the stack wipe on Baluchistan. <laughs> so easy. And my boy Ajab just got absolutely murdered. I've never seen Isfahan as a country before. Didn't even know that they could be a country. Alright, in this war, I'm going to full annex this little nation here in India to kind of give us a foothold over here. And we will also full annex Baluchistan, which might give us a bit of a coalition. No, nobody cares about Baluchistan. Alright, rival-wise, we're going to rival Mawar. And that's really about it. Uh, we're going to see if we can't land an alliance with somebody else over here. I'm also going to make this province here into a trade company. So it gives us a little bit more trade power and just helps us out push some more of that money this way. Also, we are going to be attacking this little OPM as he has no allies. And we can also ally Juan Per, which is awesome. Uh, I was going to start another war against uh, Sind here, but they ended up allying Malwa. Which, honestly, maybe we just do this war. Yeah, you know what? We'll just, we're just going to go for it. We're just going to try this out, see if we win. Especially when you're stack wiping armies. That always helps. Ooh, Timurids are invading Multan, which kind of screws me over because now Juwan Per is uh, dragged into that war. Alright, we did take Delhi's capital. So let's see if we can't march down here to Malwa. Start getting these guys out of here. I'm going to make uh, Delhi give us war reps and all their money. And now. Bahmana is, is at war with Malwa because they're invading this little guy of Idar here, or Idar. Alright, and let's get Malwa out of here. War reps and money. And we should be able to full annex Sin unless they're going to be a little bit of a butt. No, they're not. Boom. Expanding more into India. If only I could figure out how to get to these Timurid guys. Again, I could call on the Mamluks here, but I want at least one more ally. Which, I don't see myself really getting a, another ally. I mean, alternatively, I could just attack Maura, right? Uh, Timurids may not join that war soon enough. We'll add even more of this into our trade company. And we've already bumped up our trade node almost to 7 ducats, which isn't bad considering it started out at like, what, 1.7? 2 ducats? 2.3? And I don't know why our merchant's sending trade here when he should be sending it straight to Gujarat. Send this navy here to go ahead and protect trade in Coromandel, hopefully pushing more money up here and into our trade node, into our home node. And I will rival Korakoyunlu next. And I think our next war is going to be against Mushasha. I know, a lot of wars so far this, <laughs> this time around. Ooh, Fars attack Timurids with independence, meaning, uh, let's look at Timurids. Oh no, Transoceana actually stayed? I'm so confused. So, so far it's just Fars, which, uh, you know what? We're, we too are going to attack Fars. Now we'll hire the free company just as extra bodies to help us siege stuff down. We do have a core on Fars, so that's why I was able to attack them right away. And now Tamarids are at war with the rest of their subjects, it looks like. And even Korra Koyulu is in this war. This is working out perfectly. Just guess what? At some point, we're going to be hopping on the Timurids. Also, uh, AI being the best it can possibly be. All right. Lucky for me, uh, Karakuyu actually unseeds this province, meaning uh, we we have a high chance of actually full annexing Fars. As long as Delhi gets out of here, we, we could full annex these guys. Also, how did Mushasha en end up with an alliance at Bahmanis? It's such a weird alliance right there. All right. We could get... Delhi out of this war, which means, uh, yeah, we could full annex Fars. Oh, that is great. From trying to win an independence war to not existing anymore. Good job, Fars. I like it. And we will make a pit stop here in the Timurids, uh, with an attempt to take back our cores. And also connect our land. This is kind of annoying, <laughs> having to ship all my guys all the way around everywhere. 
Things have just progressively become a bloodbath over here, like, just because of the Timurid Independence Wars. Also gotta love how, um, Timurids are still at war with Delhi and Mamlux for the Farsi War of Independence. Gotta love it. Alright, and we can full annex Mara, take all their money, and our name's pretty freaking big. As for this Timurid War, I'm just gonna take something like this. Oh yeah, that's a good looking Hormuz. Alright, so earlier I mentioned taking exploration ideas, however, things are going way better than I ever anticipated right now. So, uh, honestly, we might end up just taking trade ideas. It only makes sense to take trade ideas in a series about spawning global trade, right? And as you may notice, I haven't mentioned once about debbing for the Renaissance. Now, why is that? It's 1481, we're almost in the colonialism. Well, I'm hoping the Mamluks actually spread the Renaissance to me, uh, especially since they already have it. The institution spread really, really fast this time around. And I guess it's because it's spawned in Venice, who actually is friendly with a few different nations, such as the Mamluks, even though, well, they're neutral towards them. But anyways, they did spread it to the Mamluks. So I guess Juan Per was forced to break their alliance with us. That that sucks. Thanks, Timurids. For a tier three government reform, we're going to go with centralized monarchical bureaucracy. Man, that, that one's a mouthful to say. We got another merchant from our trade ideas. Uh, we're going to send this one here to the Deccan. Transfer some trade power into Gujarat. All right, time for us to embrace the Renaissance. And we are going to be taking quantity ideas. Originally, I was thinking we're going to go with plutocratic ideas. However, quantity and trade ideas gives us another 15% goods produced. Maybe later on we'll go with uh, plutocratic, though do really like some of these in plutocratic i just feel like quantity might be better especially some you know we kind of don't really have too many like military things in our ideas other than naval stuff now we can also afford a naval policy or naval doctrine so we're going to go with the merchant navy one because we're going to rely heavily on our ships to protect our uh, trade power all right let's start our war against mushasha we can call in all of our allies to beat up on bahmanes korakoyunu and ishvahan okay and i'm thinking we're gonna do something like this this is probably gonna be our last war here in the middle east that we conquer stuff with so now we own the entire persian gulf to ourselves what a lovely thing so far we're making about 36 ducats in total income 20 of those ducats is from our trade which is really really nice all of it coming from ormas for our tier 4 government reform we're going to go with strengthen the ulema so we can convert a lot of these provinces uh as you know earlier i showed we have a lot of Ibadi and shia provinces so we got to convert that stuff we even going down the mysticism route as of right now just so i get a little bit extra missionary strength also don't like how the Ottomans, uh, they just beat up Poland and now they're directly attacking Muscovy. Don't like that at all. Also, uh, France is going ham on Austria. Alright, we're going to start our next war in India, which is going to be against Mawar. We're going to call them both Bengal and Delhi. I looked at Vijayanagar, and yeah, they have more troops than me, but they're behind me by three mil tax. So, that's an advantage all on its own. Let's go ahead and call him Bengal Delhi, and let's take a lot of my war. Also, I war with this guy here. He's allied to Vijayanagar, which, as you guys know, we're already at war with Vijayanagar. Uh, if I start this war, Vijayanagar obviously would not be called into this because we're already fighting them. So, might as well make a quick pit stop here and get another nation I want to annex out of the way. Alright, this war against this little guy here is all done. Recall my diplomat and we'll full annex him. And Vijayanagar's down to 14k troops. I haven't fought a single battle against these guys. Uh, my allies have been doing all the heavy lifting against them. I'm kind of curious though. We, If I should maybe take a couple trade, a couple coastal provinces from them. And we'll just get Vij out of here with a white piece. And as for war, we're going to do something like this and make them end their alliance with Vijayanagar. We'll just continue to add all these provinces to our trade company in Gujarat, which we own about half of now. Okay, and I have about 770 ducats. I want to invest a lot of that into our trade company right now, especially in certain things like this company depot. That's going to be really nice. 
One thing I forgot about, since we are an Eastern plutocracy, we're like a weird cross between like a merchant republic and still a monarchy. Uh, we could actually create trading posts. So we're, you know what, we're going to be creating a bunch of these things. All right, and our next war, we're actually going to be attacking Bachmanis. Mainly because I could get Mamluks in this war and uh, Corspin Gaul. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and attack these guys. Okay, Bafmanes, we're going to take something like this and all their money. Here is 1526, so we're making almost 40 ducats a month. Ottomans are attacking the Mamluks. Uh, Considering the Ottomans have 179,000 troops and it's 1530, because they took quantity ideas and finished their ambition, I'm sorry, but no Mamluks. You're gonna be my buffer state against these guys. Maybe I can even get the Ottomans. And look at that, Ottomans actually became friendly towards me, so yeah, I'm gonna ally you. Cause I don't want to die today. All right, I did put a trading post in that province I just took. So uh, yeah, we're we're moving seven ducats out of there now, making our trade node thirty worth. 36 ducats. We're pumping almost 30 ducats out of Gujarat. Pretty impressive, actually. And next stop is Coromandel. And right now, we are the second most valuable trade node right behind the English Channel at 42 ducats. All right, we're going to start our next war against Vijayanagar. We're going to call them both Bengal and Delhi. Let's do this. So this war was actually really tough early on because Vijayanagar had 60,000 troops. However, I straight up just out mercenaried Vijayanagar and uh, I'm still making a lot of money right now. It's just the crazy thing. But uh, we're looking at something like this for a peace deal. All right, Age of Reformation. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to go with powerful trade ships for the extra ship trade power propagation. 20%. That's actually really, really nice. Third idea group time. We're going to go with economic. So that way we can hopefully get that extra production efficiency right away and get that additional merchant before 1600. And yeah, my ideas suck this game. It, my, my whole tech and monarch point generations was so bad. This is the first time I've had a good monarch and like, you know, I, most of his lifespan has been trying to get caught up in tech. Fingers crossed. We could spawn global trade. We're going to see, hopefully by 1600, if we can. I mean, this is a lot of money. I didn't expect us to get this high already in 1550 in terms of total uh, trade income. Uh, and our actual total income is 153 ducats. We're making 109 ducats from trade right now. So again, making quite a bit of money. And... Oh, and global trade has spawned. Yes. Where did it spawn? Which province specifically? In our capital of Ormuz. And at one point I got my trade note up to 110 ducats. The issue is right now Juan Per Vijayanagar War. Um, <laughs> I was pushing like 90 ducats out of the Gujarat trade note by itself. And of course, you know, I have more money coming out of Coromandel. Just happy I actually spawned global trade in this province over here. And that's going to conclude it for today's video. I um, hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, I know it's different than the last time I, I made a video in this series. Uh, let me know what you guys think of this format as opposed to the original format of me making these videos. Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, if you really like this video, I hope you guys leave a like, uh, like on this video. And also, uh, hopefully, it encourages you guys to subscribe to my channel as well. As I mentioned earlier, we are trying to make a big push towards 5,000 subscribers. And it would be great if everybody's part of that. Also in the comment section down below, let me know what trade nodes you would like me to do next. I'm not going to do Lhasa just yet. 
We're not doing Lhasa just yet, just because, I mean, for one, that's, that's like the hardest trade node right now, but, um, so I want, I want to save that towards like the end of, you know, the series. So let me, let me know what trade node you guys want me, want to see me do next. And I will see you guys in the next one. Chairman out.